These are some of the bravest cops in the country. Fighting crime up close and personal. Their battleground, the city of London. Move, move. The very heart of one of the most crime-ridden capitals in Europe. Gang violence. Deadly weapons and lethal drugs. This is Brickhop's Law and Disorder. Coming up, meeting suspected violence with force. An undercover sting to catch a gang of alleged motorbike thieves. If you're on a position to strike, strike. Brutal and bloody injuries. We'll get you an ambulance. And coming down hard on drunken abuse. Do that again, and you'll get the gun for assault as well. Friday night in the city of London. Uniformed response PCs David Edwards and Giles Cunningham are rushing to the scene of a 999 call. All they know is there's a massive fight on the street. Bottles are being smashed and the cops need to get there fast. Just as the rapid response cops arrive at the scene, they're given a tip off. A car full of the alleged suspects is up ahead. They get right behind them and pull them over. The cops need to tread carefully. There are four people in the car and they don't know who they are or whether they're armed. Hello, chap. Take the keys out and join me on the pavement, please. You wait in the car, chap. Wait in the car. Why are you pushing me? For his own safety, PC Cunningham needs to talk to them one at a time. But one passenger refuses to get back in the car. The man seems agitated and could be aggressive. PC Cunningham isn't going to take any chances. With a perceived threat to the officer's safety, colleagues are on the man in seconds. As it kicks off, a crowd starts to build. While they get a grip of the suspect, other officers try to get a grip of the situation. Some guys was pointing in this car, yeah. right away. So obviously they make descriptions as males yeah. being involved. Right. Needing more information, they grill the driver. Has there been fights? I've seen some commotion down there, but it's nothing to do with us. He claims that they saw a fight, but weren't involved in it. By now, police activity is attracting an even larger crowd, and the atmosphere on the street is getting tense. It's creating too much of a problem here, so we're going to knock it on. PCs Edwards and Cunningham have to make a decision quickly before they lose control of the situation. There are a lot of people on the street coming out to see what was going on, and I think uh, in light of the fact there were no offences as such and that the uh, report hadn't been substantiated originally, uh, we decided that it was best to uh, not take any further action and not escalate uh, what might have become a bit more volatile situation, um, which I think was probably the best action in this case. The city of London is the financial heart of the country, but the wealth generated here has become a magnet for organised crime. In the square mile, criminal gangs are known to operate. But hot on their tail are the City of London's crime squad. This team of covert officers are out to catch criminals in the act. They work undercover on the city streets, so some of their identities have to remain hidden. Overseeing their operations is the boss of this manor, Superintendent David Wood. Crime squad consists of a detective sergeant and eight constables under his wing, and they are highly successful in the arena in which they operate. They're very skilled in plainclothes work. They're trained in surveillance and observation techniques, 
and doing this on a daily basis, they've built up a high level of expertise and they know the particular faces they're looking for, they know the areas that these people work in and they're out there ready to pounce. Second in command is DS Dom Parkin. He monitors the criminal gangs that operate in the city. If there's anything unusual going on, he's the man who'll spot it. And the criminals on his patch seem to have a new target. We were constantly analysing the crimes to discover emerging trends, and one such trend is the increase in theft of high-powered motorcycles. Two men arrive at a bike bay, quickly followed by a white van. While the two men check out who's around, the driver keeps the engine running. Then the scouts do a quick recce of the whole street. They return a few minutes later, signal to the van driver to move the van into position. Then, in a matter of seconds, the cocky criminals calmly open the van door and 10 grand's worth of bike disappears into the back. This gang were put behind bars for their crimes, but recently other bike thieves have sprung up in the city. These appear to be the ones that are the most desirable. Um, most of them around about the eight to 10,000 pound mark. Every one of them will do over 150 miles an hour. They'll do naught to 60 in about three or four seconds. They are exceptional vehicles. The criminals seem to agree. Crime squad officers have been monitoring bike bays in the city to try and work out where the thieves will strike next. The map there just covers the City of London area, obviously the river, the River Thames is down here. The hotspot area is Cannon Street Railway Station here, and in these little back streets there's numerous motorcycle bays, um, each one has 20 or 30 bikes in it. With this area identified as a likely target, Crime Squad cops prepare for the sting, codenamed Operation Dollar. But these officers aren't just going undercover, they're going in disguise. There's a building site near the target bike bay, so one team are heading to the location dressed as builders. For this stakeout, they need to blend into the crowd. The passing public won't know they're there. And more importantly, nor will the motorbike thieves. Even the crime squad governor, DS Don Parkin, is taking on a new role. He's now a cycle courier. And beefing up the numbers are normally uniformed officers Tom Branch and Mike Nunn. All right, well, obviously, you can see I'm uh, dressed as a builder to the, uh, the, the best of our efforts. Uh, so we'll have uh, two or three of us here in a van, and we're sort of, we've got the sort of left of the bay is three or four of the other guys dressed as builders. And then what we have is people in an observation point who have got a very good view of the bike, and they can see what's coming in and out of the area. Because these gangs have a reputation for violence, the crime squad can't take any chances. Backup is just around the corner, hidden in a white builder's van. This type of lads, uh, they want to get away. I won't necessarily want to fight, but they just want to get away by any means. So yeah, chances are they probably have to be put on the floor and handcuffed straight away. After the break, a chase through Liverpool Street Station. The trap is set for the alleged bike thieves. If you're in a position to strike, strike. And cops hunt down a suspected shoplifter. Yeah, suspect down North Sumberdon Daly towards East Chief. The City of London is suffering from a motorbike theft epidemic. And it's down to the undercover officers from the crime squad to catch the gang responsible. They're in disguise, surrounding the area and blending in with the public. Businessmen, builders, tourists. It's impossible to know who is a cop. With a bike stolen on their patch every two days, it's vital for the crime squad to catch the gang red-handed. 
They believe stolen bikes are being stripped down and sold on. They're stealing the motorcycles, and then because they can't shift them on their current chassis number and current registration plate, they're rebuilding the bikes around legitimate frame numbers and then shifting them on. The crime squad have identified a bike bay filled with top-of-the-range machines that they think will be the gang's next target. You know, we've got intel, you know, we have got information, but at the end of the day, it's just like calculated luck. It's a weighing game, but when you get a result, it means a lot. These thieves are bold and brazen. Previous gangs have stolen bikes from bays monitored by CCTV and in clear view of passing members of the public in broad daylight. And lately, the gangs have become even more audacious, ditching the white van and just towing the bikes away on the back of a moped. Be two up on the bike, and if there is anything worth thinking, one, to get off, sit down at the front of the bike and try and break steering lock. It can take as little as 10 seconds. Suddenly, the cop's patience and planning looks like it's about to pay off. One of the officers notices two riders on a moped paying attention to bikes in a nearby bay. Just doing a, just had a moped come in, done a look at all the bikes, turned around and gone back again. Just doing a check on the uh, ENC, see if that motorbike's stolen or not. A police check on the license plates reveal that the vehicle is stolen and it's heading their way. It's midday in the city. And uniformed officers spot some suspicious activity on the side of the road. It's not rubbish. No rubbish. No, it belongs to someone. Yeah? Just search one search. Yeah. Do you want to just go over there for us? This man suspected of ripping copper wiring from the back of a phone exchange box. Basically, because I've seen picking up of the, uh, the wires and things, I'm going to search you under section one of pace, OK, for stolen articles, going equipped to steal. You got anything sharp? It's a strange crime, but one that's on the increase as the price of copper goes through the roof. And the suspect seems to be carrying the tools of the trade. Stanley Blue, wires. The theft of copper wiring may seem petty, but it can have a devastating effect on local businesses, causing havoc with communications and costing thousands in lost revenue and repair. Basically, we've just found a load of uh, load of copper wiring and various other bits of uh, building material. And then in the other bag, we found hacksaw and uh, other stuff. I think I think he'll be coming in for gain equipped to steal. As we noticed him taking the uh, the wires from the back of the uh, the phone box there, we'll get a unit down here to deal with him. Normally, they take it from buildings, derelict buildings, and. Uh, old buildings like that. But yeah, it's quite a big business, apparently. Get a lot of money for copper uh, wiring. I'll go and get a bag. Get a bag. The yeah. price of copper can reach up to five pounds per kilo. And this suspect has two rather large bags full of it. This crime isn't for the faint-hearted. The stakes are high. There have been a number of deaths through electrocution as a result of this crime. But amazingly, this doesn't seem to put the thieves off. There's been a, a lot of... Um, thefts of cables and things like that from building sites and new development, so... This man may have escaped electrocution this time, but he's still in for a shock. Arrest you. Because his copper-based theft has been foiled. Crime squad officers are hunting a gang of bike thieves. They've been staking out a bike bay, and police CCTV has just picked up two riders on a stolen moped heading their way. But the undercover police operation is thrown into chaos when the moped goes straight past them and heads towards a different bay a few streets away. There's a bay down there that holds about 60 motorbikes, so they've obviously gone down there to have a look if there's anything they fancy nicking today. As the two riders turn into a covered walkway, undercover officers rush to the scene. Confirm two up. And the net begins to close in on the suspected thieves. Yeah, units to drift towards... Driver is now off. Walking through... 
one of the riders takes a closer look at the bikes on offer. I'll confirm what the second person is. The cops think they've already identified a particular bike. If it is, as quick as possible, we're in the position for a strike. And they begin breaking the steering lock. I'm going to take them through. Just as undercover officers begin to move in. Yeah, all units keep the uh, airways clear. He wants to go in. If you're on a position to strike, strike. The cops strike hard and fast using CS gas and wrestling both suspected thieves to the ground before either of them knows what's happening. Stunned by the effect of the CS gas, the suspected thieves offer little resistance. And the cops soon have the situation under control. What we've had here is uh, two guys turn up on a stolen bike into the secure little alleyway and they've tried to steal the bike next to them and fortunately we had cops down here and they've been detained. It's a great result, we've got a stolen bike back that they were on, two boys nicked the bike they were about to steal and nobody's been hurt so it's great, great news. As we've approached um, from this area we've heard a crunch um, so we suspect that they attempted to nick that obviously we've seen them have got it before. The cops' quick thinking means the alleged thieves were caught red-handed. Right. So I just told you why you're under arrest tonight. Yeah, but we theft of that moped. What moped? The moped you're on, right? And now the only ride they'll be taking is in the back of a police van. Uh, to have caught them now is very satisfying indeed. Um, and it's not luck, it's hard work, teamwork. When I've arrived, um, the two males were getting CS'd by my colleague. We then all piled in there trying to contain the males and get them cuffed. I've ended up nicking this guy um, for the lost or stolen moped that they were on, but also for the attempted theft of the uh, motorbike over there. Mounting undercover operations like this can be potentially dangerous for the police and for the public. But the tactics used by the crime squad have been spot on. As they're taken away, a search of the stolen bike the suspected thieves were riding shows they came equipped. Yeah, we got, um, there's, a, there's a couple of hammers there, claw hammers. Um, there's a drill bit which would be used to um, bang into the uh, ignition barrel and then to the claw hammer used to pull that drill bit out. With it comes the the ignition barrel and exposing the mechanism to start the engine without a key. Operation Dollar has been a success. These two suspects are now heading for interview rooms where the investigation will continue. Saturday night and cops have received a 999 call. A chase is in progress. Officers Sam Chowdhury and Jeremy McLennan are racing to assist a supermarket security guard. He's pursuing a shoplifter on foot while on the phone to police. Yes, yeah, suspect now running westbound Fenchurch Street on the south pavement. The police know the city streets like the back of their hands, and with the guard updating the cops on the suspect's movements, Yes, yeah, suspect yeah, down Northumberland Daly towards East Chief. It's only a matter of time before they have him cornered. Yeah, we've got the suspect on crutched fries. Stop. OK, what have you got on you? Why are you running away? Security guards chasing you, yeah? on the bridge before I fucking miss my train. Right, OK, I'm searching you. The man claims one. he's running for his train. Okay, for stolen articles, yeah? Have you got anything on you that you've stolen or you shouldn't have on you? But a quick search reveals the real reason for his late night sprint. Yeah, it's crutching fries. Uh, it's one detained. It's going to be arrested by 203 for the theft. We've got the security guard and uh, the DP with us. Although the suspect is compliant, Officer Chowdhury suspects he's got more to hide. Do you take any drugs at all? Smoke a bit of cannabis, yeah. Do you have your, your eyes are quite dilated? No, I don't take drugs, drugs. Just a bit of, you had a bit of cannabis recently? Yeah, 
Sorry? Spack on a little bit of cannabis. Yeah. The suspect admits he's got some cannabis on him. And the cops believe he's under the influence of both drink and drugs. Hand. They're not going to take any chances. OK, don't struggle yet. Around 700,000 people are convicted of shoplifting in the UK each year. And alcohol is one of the most common items stolen from supermarkets. Now, yeah, what's happened is security from Tesco's has uh, witnessed someone stealing something and uh, gave a running commentary on their mobile. Thankfully, very good commentary. We've assisted, made our way to the area, and my colleagues managed to stop them and run away. So, to show their appreciation for his running commentary, the cops give the eagle eyed security guard a lift back to his store. When he left the store, I noticed a big bulge in his pockets. I thought it was a bigger bottle of wine. I asked him to come back in because I knew he had stolen something. While the shoplifter gets a ride straight to the Nick. Midnight. And police have been called to assist in another foot chase. But once again, it's not a cop who's in hot pursuit of the suspects. This time, it's a taxi driver. He's telling three people who have allegedly done a runner from his cab without paying the fare. Basically, we've had a call from a taxi driver, two males, uh, two females rather, and one male have uh, walked off without paying the fare. Um, we're going to try and trace them. Yeah, what entrance did they uh, enter the station, please? But as the cops enter Liverpool Street Station, they lose contact with a taxi driver. Yeah, I can't get through uh, to the informant via his mobile. If, the, if there's any other unit that can go to outside Liverpool Street Station, try and locate uh, the taxi driver. We're going to do a search, an area search of the inside of the uh, station. The last trains are getting ready to leave the station, and with 18 platforms to check, the cops know time is against them. There's a good chance the suspects could board a departing train and slip away. Minutes later, the taxi driver makes contact with the cops. He's on one of the platforms. He's found the alleged fare dodgers. They've just boarded a train, and it's about to leave. After the break, drunk and definitely disorderly, a man seriously injured. I get you an ambulance, fella. And cops think they're onto a gang of con men. You're travelling in the car with someone you don't know his name of. This is a bit dangerous for your own welfare. He's your friend, but no, you don't know his name. OK. At Liverpool Street Station, officers are racing to question three suspects who have allegedly run from a taxi without paying their fare. Can you want to step off the train, please? When they get there, the angry cabbie points out the alleged fare dodgers. Is there one more? Step off the uh, train. Oh, I'm sorry, mate. This guy's saying that we haven't. Oh, yeah. Okay, just going to stand up. Yeah, of course. Oh, I see. Scan up against yeah. here for me. Right, what's, what's happening then, fella? We said to him 15 quid, we gave him a tenner and then he got the arm, so... That's so it. you haven't paid enough then, yeah? Well, no, when I, say we when I say we haven't paid enough, mate, it's just round the bloody hours as it was. We missed our first train as it was. We're waiting for another train now, and literally I'm taking my girlfriend back with all her gear back to mine, so... Oh, the man is keen to get his girlfriend home. Yeah, he's happy for him just to be paid and... Yeah. All right, well, if you give him the extra money, and then that'll be it done with, OK? And the taxi driver is keen to get his money. So there's a simple solution. Basically, a fair dispute where there's been a little bit of an argument over the price of the fare. Uh, the cabbie has chased them down to this platform. Um, but they've seen sense, they've handed over the appropriate fare, and all parties have been allowed to go on their way. The taxi dispute over a fiver turned out to be a storm in a teacup. But it's put the officers in a prime position to deal with a more urgent matter. A man has fallen down some escalators. He sustained serious injuries to his legs 
and needs urgent medical attention. Well, I get you an ambulance, fella. CP from seven. I think you better get that looked at. It's got a male with uh, quite deep cuts to his legs, aged approximately 30. The man is struggling to get to his feet. But the cops can't be sure if that's due to drink or the fall. Let's go to the... Boozing on the underground can be bad for your health. Alcohol accounts for hundreds of injuries every year. That's quite a nasty cut. They help the man stagger towards the station's first aid room, where he'll be treated for deep cuts to his legs. Half a mile away, PCs Chowdhury and Jones are responding to another 999 call. There's trouble at another train station. Someone's been attacked. The officers are there in minutes. When they enter the station, they find a man being restrained by two community support officers. Who? Me? Okay, yeah. <laughs> Are you talking about me, love? Apparently, yeah. You're not no, no. But it soon becomes clear this isn't the suspect in the alleged assault. No, no. Are you happy for him just to be ejected, then? Are you? This is another incident so. altogether. But no other offences have been committed, no? Uh, no, it's just been... Burned. You're not travelling from here, yeah? Station staff have claimed this man has been verbally abusive to them, and they want him out. By the time PC Jones escorts him outside, his colleague has finally tracked down the suspect in the assault they were originally called out to. He's accused of not just swearing at station staff, but of actually assaulting one of them. This gentleman's security guard works for a train station. He's just informed me that this male's been abusive towards him and assaulted him. Uh, we've just turned up on the scene. There's another male been ejected from the premises. But due to the allegations, the other male's going to get arrested. Just stand there, now, one time. Just stand there, man. He drank the barrier. This gentleman's tried to get him back. And as he's come back, he's caused a bit of a scuffle and hit the gentleman. The City of London has seven mainline stations and 13 separate tube stations in its square mile radius. More than 300,000 people commute to the city each weekday, and almost all of them use public transport. With so much human traffic passing through the city, the police regularly have to deal with problem commuters. The suspect is heavily under the influence of alcohol and seems oblivious to his situation. On London transport alone, there are around 600 assaults a year on staff, and Transport for London insist on prosecution for these crimes. The male's told me that you've punched him in the head. I do understand that you're in a drunken state, and when I arrest you, you understand what you've been arrested for, yeah? Not surprisingly, most of these types of crimes are alcohol-related. Across the city, PCs Abda Shaheed and Liam Byrne are racing to save a man's life. Literally. Terrified witnesses have called police. They think they can see a man trying to commit suicide off Tower Bridge. As they approach, the cops shut off the sirens. As we're going very close to the bridge, I've switched everything off, um, not to scare the person away or make him jump off unnecessarily. Emergency services often have to recover bodies from the Thames. Many are the result of suicides from bridges. Other officers have already arrived and managed to grab the man from the edge of the parapet. Yeah, we managed to remove this uh, male off the bridge uh, successfully. Just speaking to him now. But the cops quickly realise this man isn't suicidal, he was asleep. Precariously balanced on the narrow ledge, fast moving traffic on one side and a sheer drop into the Thames on the other. You 
and he isn't too pleased that he's been disturbed. I was, I was, I was quite happy. In the end, the officers had no choice but to simply move the man on. He may not realise the danger he was in, but the police are in no doubt he's actually lucky to be alive. He's, he's kind of found, obviously, right on the, the side of the bridge here. Down the other side is a, a completely sheer drop, so if he's moving around, moves his legs, he's going to go straight down there, straight down the other end of the bridge, so we can't let him stay here for obvious reasons, it's just not safe. Um, he's not very happy about it for whatever reason, he doesn't like his life being saved, um, but we're going to send him on his way anyway. But obviously it's um, not the most sensible place to sleep. As the sun rises over the city of London, the economic heart of the country kicks into gear. The Square Mile is home to some of the country's leading financial institutions and criminal gangs have woken up to the amount of money that's on offer in these streets. One of the rising trends used by gangs is distraction theft. Distraction thieves are con men who use many different methods to divert their victims' attention. They select their target carefully, often following people who have made large cash withdrawals from banks. In this CCTV footage, a woman squirts liquid on a man's jacket. Then, while she distracts him by pretending to help him wipe it off, her accomplice moves in and lifts an envelope containing £2,000 from his bag. The victim had only just withdrawn the money from a bank across the street, and police believe the gang watched him make the transaction, then followed him from there. This guy is involved. Crime Squad have images of various suspected distraction thieves caught on CCTV. Officer Mark Bannon has been tasked with tracking down these men. Police cameras in the City of London record the registration plate of every car that passes through their patch, and when they spot a car that's been seen in the vicinity of some recent distraction thefts, Officer Bannon races to the scene. For the last two days, this car's been parking up in, a, in close to banks where recently, within the last few months, people have experienced this exact same sort of theft. Officer Bannon can't be sure that these are the men wanted in connection with distraction theft, but he senses that something might not be quite right. No ID, do you have any ID docs? Just to cash in the wallet. And when Officer Bannon starts questioning the men, the plot really does begin to thicken. What's your name, mate? Yeah, where are you from, mate? Mexico. Mexico? Yeah. Where's he from? Um, Guatemala. Guatemala? Yeah. Name, what's his name? Um, I don't know. You don't know his name? You don't know his name? Is my friend? Yeah, your friend here. No, this is the... Um, this... No, no name. No name? He has no name. You're travelling in the car with someone you don't know his name of. This is a bit dangerous this for your own my, welfare. He's my friend. He's your friend, but no, you don't know his name? Yeah. OK. Then, when police run a check on the car, they find it isn't registered to any of the three men. Mr. the owner. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's my friend in yeah. Spain. How long ago did he go to Spain? Uh, yesterday. yesterday. Yesterday? He went yesterday? Yeah, yeah. yeah? OK. Yesterday, how long? Which, air, which airport? Train. Which airport? Mm, I don't know. You don't know? No, no. OK. Officer Bannon suspects these men may be involved in distraction theft, but he'll need more evidence if he's going to bring them in for questioning. Across town, and cops are already dealing with their first booze-related call-out of the day. Stop swearing. A drunken man is verbally attacking passers-by. He's getting more aggressive by the second. The cops have a zero-tolerance approach to antisocial behaviour. This drunk is getting nicked. Right, fella, you're under arrest. Suspicion of being drunk disorderly. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence. Wait and question. Something for you later on in court. Anything you do say may be given evidence. Do you understand? Yeah, it does. Stay there, all right? He was verbally insulting uh, two black females went past, saying to f back to Jamaica. She's speaking to him, he's swearing at her, chucked all his papers on the floor. 
clearly due to his intoxication, got no respect for people and uh, been abusive. He might be in handcuffs, but that doesn't stop this man from striking out at PC Darren Brockwell. Do that again, and you'll get done for assault as well. Okay? Where Don't kick my head. Head. The officers take no chances and hold him down in case he kicks off again. Cops have to deal with this barrage of abuse all the time. For them, it's just another part of the job. And when he realises he's off to the nick, he doesn't make it easy for them. Finally in the van, he's taken back to the station to sober up. Troubles of alcohol. A bodega's age, 2008, good year. <laughs> After the break. A cocky drink drive suspect attempts to wind up the cops. I'd have gone to speak so with yourself. Would you? That's yeah. why I did go. Well, you've got money. And cops continue to quiz the suspected distraction thieves. You're travelling in the car with someone you don't know his name of. This is a bit dangerous for your own welfare. Crime Squad officer Mark Bannon suspects these men may be a gang of distraction thieves. Distraction thieves generally work in teams. While one distracts the victim, another moves in for the take. This car was stopped after it was spotted in the vicinity of some similar thefts. And so far, the men's stories aren't convincing the cops. You're travelling in the car with someone you don't know his name of. This is a bit dangerous for your own my welfare. Friend, my friend. He's your friend, but no, you don't know his name. OK. For several months, police have been on the hunt for a ruthless criminal gang responsible for thefts totalling hundreds of thousands of pounds. And the cops believe this car might be linked in some way to one of those gangs. Beware, they had stuff secreted in the panel of the car. The last lot had a knife in an umbrella, so the last two lots have had knives on them. That's why the car's occupants are getting a grilling. Yeah, they've got a bottle full of shampoo in a front driver's seat. Distraction fees have been known to mix liquids, like shampoo, with other substances to make the sticky solution they squirt on their victim before another member moves in for the sting. It's a method that police have seen before. And it's not long before some suspicious metal spikes are found in the car. These were secreted up there, and they've got, like, hollow-tip metal things. J reckons you can use them for breaking into car windows. Or stabbing tyres. They do do the tyre slash thing, don't they? The outlook for these men isn't good. They've failed to convince the police they have a valid reason to be in the city. None of them are the registered owners of the car and they've been found with numerous items used in distraction thefts. PC Bannon decides he's got enough evidence to bring the three men in for questioning. All three have been arrested for gaining equipment and conspiracy to steal. Um, not happy with those items secreted in a, in, a, in a panel of a car like that. None of them provide an account for having it. I believe these two could well be suspects for one of our outstanding crimes, and uh, they do look like the guys in the, Im in the images that I've seen on uh, briefings. So they could well be suspects that's been arrested for conspiracy still today. They've been, they've been in and out of the city for two days near, near banks where this MO has actually occurred. And that car is registered to someone who's not in the country and we can't get hold of. And now he's shouting at him to shut up and don't talk, don't talk when you get into the police station. And he doesn't even know his name. So um, they've all been arrested for conspiracy still. We believe they're targeting victims in banks. Uh, and we believe they're going equipped to those metal items to, to carry out that theft. This car was later linked to distraction crimes, totalling nearly £80,000. But the three men in it were later released without charge. It's the middle of the night shift. 
cops have nicked a suspected drink driver, but they've called for backup. PCs Jarvis and Brockwell are en route. We're basically responding to an incident where, um, I believe, a drink driver has been stopped by our, our officers in an unmarked vehicle, and the are becoming quite aggressive, so we're going to um, assist our officers. The suspect's getting more and more difficult, even though it was his arrogant manner that got him stopped in the first place. Don't be an idiot. Comply with the procedure. If you're going to be under the limit, you'll be on your way. He's on his mobile phone. He's oh, swerving okay. as he's driving. Yeah. He pulled up at the lights, and I said to him, oh, it's £60 fine, three points on your licence. Okay. Oh, he's got no seatbelt on as well, that's £6. When he's trying to do his seatbelt, he's dropping the seatbelt and he's falling. Yeah. And it's, he, he can't manage to put the seatbelt okay. over his arm. Dealing with difficult people is something experienced cops do all the time, but they still need to keep their cool, even when the suspect is trying to be clever. I'd have gone to speak so myself. Would you? That's yeah. why I did go. Well, you've got mud. Come on, get on Fella, with it. Fella, I'll do it when I'm ready, yeah? Well, well, I'll do it when I'm ready then. Good, well, then you get Nick, mate, won't you? The driver's obnoxious behaviour isn't doing him any favours and he's refusing to cooperate with officers. Chelsea. Failing to provide a breath specimen can result in a fine of up to £1,000. But how old are you? Don't ask you how old you are. And you'll be arrested anyway. So despite his cocky attitude, the driver has little choice. All right, so what I'm going to ask you to do is can you blow into his mouthpiece and, until I say stop, when you're ready. OK, keep going, please. Keep going. OK, thank you. OK, at the moment, sir, this result is a fail, all right? The cops don't seem surprised by the result. That's a fail. Bit. He's in the next area, isn't he? You're going to be arrested for failing yes, breathless, right? You're not saying my hardy defence will mention. The realisation of what's happening seems to temporarily calm the driver down. I do. Good. And you are you going to come to the van complaints? I've not got a car. I'm going to come to the Excellent. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to search you, give you a cursory search, make sure you've got nothing that's going to hurt you in the van, all right? Yeah. I'll piss off. But it's not long before he's up to his old tricks again. Oh, so juicy. Being arrested and handcuffed has done nothing to dampen this driver's cocky attitude. Oh, very aggressive. Which was one of the main reasons he was stopped in the first place. I'm not aggressive at all. I'm not aggressive at all. No, you, 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 this is walk with me. No, no, you can't walk with me. You walk with me. And he continues to try and wind the officers up. Yeah, see? Mug. All the way to the police van. I've got to go. Call cool, tonight. Not you. Brick cops, law and disorder, taking you to the front line in the battle against crime. Hunting fugitives. Get on the floor, mate. On the floor. Catching con men. Bank cards in other names have been found. Cracking down on drugs. Right. I'm going to rescue that one. Our cameras capture all the action as these cops capture their criminals. Yeah, 620 active message, males running away. 